red pill. You know, you people make me laugh. Okay, so as if you think so is that I would even entertain the idea of joining up with a social club that made Donald Trump its president. This twice divorced casino owner. Right wing grifter Dave Rubin tried to red pill Bill Maher on a recent episode of his Club Random podcast, but as you saw, it didn't go too well. Even for someone like Bill Maher, who is inherently reactionary, who has indeed shifted to the right, he still is not taking the bait. And I think that the reason why Bill Maher isn't going so far as to embrace Donald Trump is because even if he has these reactionary tendencies and always had, to be clear, he isn't a grifter, right? Bill Maher has millions and millions of dollars, so he doesn't have to rely on the Trump movement specifically for money or to maintain a grift of any sorts. He could just kind of express his reactionary ideals and attack the left and have that be the end of it. But with someone like Dave Rubin, he relies on the Trump movement for views and clicks. So he has to use Trump in order to grift, even if he might sometimes throw anti-Trump critics a bone here and there. But that's the difference between these two individuals. Now, I want to play the extended clip that led to that moment where Bill Maher had to kind of explain to Dave Rubin why there's no chance that he's going to join the Trump movement. But you are not ready for how cringeworthy this segment is. Take a look. This is a very cool moment for me. Yeah, it's not going to happen. I know. <laughs> Okay, I don't care. <laughs> All I right, fine. I don't care how. Come on, a little anal, Bill. Bill, come on. The I don't shirt. Care it's how the shirt. Republican, you make the come anal sex. I'll fully red pill you. That's what we call it. <laughs> when you're splayed out over the bed. That's what we call it, Mar. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Because everyone's like, Bill Mar's almost there. What does he need to finally get over the hump? I know what it is, Bill. Oh, I Club know what random. it is, too, and it's not that. First of all, you got to break up with your boyfriend, Donald Trump. Okay, so forget Trump. I'm, uh, we don't have to, we don't even have to do politics if you don't want. But no, uh, but, but I'm just Trump. saying you. Right, so you DeSantis. brought it up. Yeah, you brought it up. Fair enough. You brought it up. Yeah. And so, I'm telling you. All right, so let's. Okay, that's so, I red pill. You know, you people make me laugh. Okay, so as if you think so, is DeSantis, that I would even entertain the idea of joining up with a social club that made Donald Trump its president. That was painful to watch, especially when Dave Rubin started to joke. Dave Rubin, comedian, by the way, started to joke about red-pilling Bill Maher by dicking him. Now, listen, Dave Rubin, to be fair, was put in an awkward position because Bill Maher was joking, also a comedian, about Dave Rubin wanting to get with him, wanting to fuck him or something like that. And as a gay man myself, I understand how awkward that is. But rather than going along with it, you have to stand up for yourself, Dave Rubin. But he instead, he kind of embraced the meme and was like, oh, well, uh, maybe a little bit of anal. When he said that, it was so cringeworthy that my skin crawled. I just, I can't, I can't handle Dave Rubin. Listen, I was put in a similar situation when I was really young. I think I was like 23, 24. And I was out bowling and a coworker had shown up with her husband and he knew that I was gay. So when he was about to bowl, he was like, ready, he stops right before he rolls the ball and he turns around and looks at me and says, hey, you're not checking out my ass, are you? And his wife just like burst out into laughter, was cackling. And that pissed me off because, um, how do I put this politely? This was somebody who was old and fat. It was a middle-aged man, not attractive. I was also in a committed relationship, so why would you think that? Um, and I just said, don't flatter yourself. It wasn't a lot, but I stood up for myself. I didn't say, oh, <laughs> that's how us gay people are. We're just always looking at every straight man's ass. It's a dumb joke for a comedian like Bill Maher to make because are you looking at every single woman? Are you just attracted to every single woman on the planet because you're straight? Of course not. That's, that's preposterous. Um, so it, it's stupid to make this joke. It's a dumb joke if you're a comedian. But Dave Rubin, he never stands up for himself. We've seen time and again how the right will rip him to shreds. They'll critique his whole family, claim that he should be executed for having children with his husband, and he never stands up for himself. He only continues to grift and blames the left. So not surprising his response there. Still deeply, deeply cringeworthy to hear him say, what about a little bit of anal, Bill Maher? It just, oh my God, as a gay man, I, I cannot handle it. Like, He's too much. 
his kids are going to be so embarrassed by him when they grow up. He just, he can't not embarrass himself. This is as bad as when he was describing the process of how babies are made to his audience when he announced that him and his husband were going to have kids and they were talking about sperm and he was like talking about it. Oh, well, there's a lot of sperm. It's just, it's too much. Dave doesn't know how to rein it in. He's so cringeworthy. But anyways... Here's more of their conversation uh, conversation about Donald Trump. This clip is really embarrassing from Dave Rubin's standpoint because Bill Maher is going to basically tell him that what he's saying is dumb. Take a look. That's what people love about him. He's yeah. authentic yeah. in that it, it's so Who funny. Who would you say is more authentic, him or Joe Biden? Him. Because Who's he's, more authentic, him or Elizabeth Warren? But authentic doesn't mean good. No, if you're I, authentically I a crazy person, but if, in a he's world, authentically a fucking moron and a crazy person. But Bill, yes, in a, he in is a authentic. World, in a world of liars, a little authenticity goes a long way. So that's that might ridiculous. be that's, a, that, that's, that's such a dumb thing. You know what? It's, it's, it's kind of like when people say, like, well, honesty is the most important thing in a relationship. No, it's not. No. Honesty is not that. Honesty will, will save no relationships. Would you say we're in a fog of bullshit right now? Everything uh, with this. The fact that he's authentic is not the most important thing. It's a nice no, thing. No, I didn't say it was the most important thing. Yeah, I kind of think you did. No, it's something, though. It's something. It's something. No, but it, it doesn't matter if the authentic, authenticity is in the service of uh, being a fucking moron. But it was pretty good when he was president. What, what was pretty good? Well... We didn't. We weren't in a recession. The border was a little bit better. We didn't have a crazy war in Ukraine. Like there were things. Come on, you have to admit. Oh. Like I get it. I get it. He also went after you personally. So I say it on my it's show all the nothing time. Nothing to do with that. No, no, but that but, was only no, no, no. But I will, I will grant you that for sure. Right. Like he and went. That doesn't bother. Me. I grant it with Megan also because he went after Megan. Remember the bleeding, yeah, bleeding for whatever. So it's like he went after you personally. If the president of the United States had ever said Dave Rubin, whatever he said about you. He hasn't conceded the election. The last. I'm, I have no defense of that. Completely no defense of that. Then we're, what are we talking about? Then we. Then the discussion is over. I mean, because after that means nothing. If you can't concede the election, the jewel in our crown of America. Yes, is, is that, that we have every other transfer. So many it. other countries had problems with the peaceful transfer. That's like the one that really trips everybody up. Yeah. And it didn't trip us up until him. Ouch! That was brutal. Um, it was brutal because Bill Maher told Dave Rubin to his face that that point was dumb, but also Dave Rubin, if you notice, backed down from every single point he was trying to make. Oh, you see, you know, things were better under Trump. And then he backed off of that immediately. Very convincing, Dave Rubin. And the reason why he's not convincing, by the way, is because he doesn't actually believe this. I don't think that Dave Rubin believes anything that he says. I think that he just says these things to appease his audience. He's probably one of the most craven grifters in America, with the exception of maybe Jackson Hinkle, but I mean, Dave Rubin is certainly top two for sure in terms of just shameless grifters. But um, yeah, and then when Bill Maher got to the point about how Trump hasn't conceded the election, Dave Rubin also couldn't defend that. So if you honestly are going to try to red pill Bill Maher, do you not prepare better arguments because you had nothing? And every single point that you brought up, Bill Maher refuted that. And I hate to say this, but I agreed with Bill Maher here. Authenticity doesn't just automatically make Trump good. It's one attribute that I think can be beneficial for politicians. And I think that it does benefit Donald Trump. But I would take somebody who's disingenuous and inauthentic over an extremist psychopath like Donald Trump. So authenticity isn't inherently good. And that's the point that Bill Maher was trying to make. But yet that was the only, I guess, positive that Dave Rubin had in his effort to red pill Bill Maher. So that's what he kind of kept sticking to, and it didn't work. Now, one more moment that I've got to play that was really embarrassing, probably the most embarrassing moment throughout this podcast for Dave Rubin was when he kept trying to plug his book. Now, this platform is going to be used by Dave Rubin to perpetuate his grift, to elevate his grift. So naturally, he tried to plug his book multiple times to the point where Bill Maher, I kid you not, had to comment on it and actually clown on him for repeatedly plugging his book nonstop. Take a look. The, the book that I'll give you at the end there, um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a defense of classical liberalism. I think you'd read the book and you would go, you know, 
maybe a little bit I'm, I'm more on the like, I don't really want any government programs anymore. So I definitely have more of that stuff now maybe than you yeah. do. Bill, I just finished a, my book tour where I did, I did stand up, you know, okay. all over you the country. You mentioned this fucking book again. Great, I'm going to throw book, this fucking bottle. I signed bottle. it for you. You're going to freaking love this it, man. You're going to love it. Bottle I don't even think I said the name of the book. It wasn't a heavy promotion that I was doing here. But anyway, it's a great book. You're going to really love it. I think you're in it. Um, I... And Listen, Dave, I don't think that you realize this, but if you wrote a book that wasn't a shameless cash grab, if you actually had something interesting or meaningful to say, people would ask you about the book. But the reason why people aren't asking you about this book is because you have nothing of value to say. You wrote a book because you want to sell it, because you want money. Like if I were to bring on Stephanie Kelton, for example, I'd ask her about her book because she wrote something that's very interesting. She is an expert on economics and modern monetary theory. I would ask Dr. Abdul El Sayed about Medicare for All, his Medicare for All book in particular, because not only is he a big advocate of Medicare for All, but he makes a very persuasive argument about Medicare for All in his book. In Dave Rubin's book, he doesn't say anything. Like you have nothing of value to say. So why would we ask you about that book? You're just trying to make money off of it and grift Bill Maher's audience. And he was on to that, which is why he called you out. So that's basically all that I have. There's more clips floating around on the internet. If you want to find them, the whole podcast, I'll link to it, to it down below. It's two hours long. So I don't know if you're going to be able to tolerate that much of Dave Rubin and Bill Maher, but it's there if you want to watch it. Either way, this was not a good look for Dave Rubin. And he really should stick to his own podcast where he can kind of, um, I don't know, control the narrative and the guests. Because when you speak to somebody else and when you try to actually make a persuasive argument to them, you really expose how shallow and vapid you are as an individual. And again, it just kind of exposes how you're just a grifter. You have no substance. You're just a grifter, period, full stop. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. 